Hello viewers, welcome to my another online session. This session is in continuation of our previous session on menu planning. I'm Chef Aditya Saxena and from Chitkara School of Hospitality. So today we will be covering the other factors that affect the menu planning, starting from seasonal availability, location of establishment, staff capabilities, type of customer, equipment availability, some space, menu language, balance. Starting from seasonal availability, now while compiling a menu for any of the establishment, another factor which has to be kept in mind is seasonal availability of the food ingredients. Those vegetables which are not available throughout the season should not be mentioned in the menu. People have a very strong likes and dislikes, so dishes should be added in the menu as per the taste. Now, for an example, person named A, he really like you know uh, spinach, palakpani was a hot person, and he went to a restaurant in mid of June. Temperatures were ranging around 38, 40, 42, and he saw palakpani in the menu ordered for it and then the order was taken when the order was given to the kitchen the kitchen said there is no palak you can't serve it in this season you don't get palak and the service guy came back and told sir we won't be able to serve you palak and he became angry because he really loved palak and he was starving craving for it so again it became it creates a scene inside the restaurant so it's better to not have those things in the menu, seasonal things, or if you have those things in the menu, write a write in a bracket availability as per no stock or seasonally available. So that people would know that okay, if this is not a season, then the particular thing is not you know available. Similarly, alu gobi gobi is not available from the year. So again, you won't be having it in the non season. Event, only in the season of the Gopi. So it should mention in front of that seasonal availability. It will give a fair, fair idea to the guests if you will be getting it or not in that particular time. Next is the location of establishment. The location of establishment has been no, uh, noticed very significant while planning for the menu for any establishment. Additions of dish should be as per the taste of the people of that particular locality. If your restaurant is situated in the area which is near to any university, fast food items with reasonable prices would be a nice suggestion, which easily affordable for the student. Continental or Thai cuisine in a rural area where people have not developed those eating habits would be a foolish idea. Exactly. People who have never eat continental food or the Thai food, they won't, you know, going for those foods over there. So they would generally avoid. Uh, we don't know what it is. Why should it be eaten? You'll be spending money, and we don't like the food. They'll generally go for the food which is of their, you know, uh, the taste which is familiar to them. Similarly, uh, if you open a restaurant in Bengal. And you are serving Punjabi food, it would be, you know, again a foolish idea. Though people will come, they will have it, but you won't get the customers on a regular basis because changing of taste is not, a, you know, habit. It is for experiment. Let's experiment. Let's have Punjabi food, Bengalis would say. The same thing will happen in Punjab also. If you open a Bengali restaurant, Punjabis will, will come there. They have to eat. They'll come there, they'll eat it, and then they'll again switch to their own local food. Because they would be coming there to experience or experiment the Bengali food. They'll eat it, but they won't include it in their own diet. So the local dishes should be there inside the menu so that the local people can be catered and some revenue can be generated. 
fix your staff capability. This is one of the important points. Staff capability is another key factor which has been viewed, which has to be taken into consideration by the hiring manual. If production staff is not efficient in preparing the dishes, then these should not be introduced to this menu. Along with this, if service staff is not capable of serving the well garnished food, this will create a scene in the restaurant. That's why it is always suggested to the managers add those dishes in the menu in which staff will comfortable. Now first example, you know, you have added few dishes inside in the, in the menu which your kitchen staff doesn't know how to prepare. What would you be doing? You will train them. There is training for the kitchen. They would be trained in making all those dishes. And then finally when they would be trained they will be told to prepare those dishes. Well garnished, well plated. Similarly, if the uh, service staff is you know uh, uh, not trained in catering the food as per the you know, as the dish has been presented, supposedly you have used the cornibria blossom as a garnish, and when the guests, uh, when the service guy take the plate and serve it to the guest, the cornibria blossom is blown away somewhere. Garnishes are running here and there. The plate is looking like a mess. It will create a scene. So, staff training is important for kitchen and for service both. So that whatever is the final product, the standard product, it should be served with the guests as it is meant to be, not in this situation. Next is your type of customer. High class people always prefer less quantity of food. But should be highly decorated. Student class prefers would be a rich portion, but may be of less decor and should be of less price. Planning menu for children that should not only attractive but also with full of protein, carbohydrates, and calcium. Now, if we talk about type of customer, there are many type of customer. As we can see on the you know screen, there is a complainer. The overly agreeable, the expert, pessimist, the staller. Now the complainer will always complain. The overly agreeable would be like he will always agree with you. Okay, I'm so that is so good. Yes, I agree with you. It should be like this. Then there is an expert, which you know always say that this should be added in the dish and it will taste much more. The pessimist will always say. Oh, then there is a stall of the uh, we won't say much. These kind of guests are much more you know, dangerous to stall. They won't say anything, but they do a bad mouth outside the restaurant. Similarly, high class people will always prefer less quality quantity of food, but should be highly depleted food, again they would prefer, which can be charged you know, heavily to them, they would be able to pay for that. Because they are not looking for food, they are looking to satisfy their economic status inside a restaurant. They will just, they are here, there to you know, pamper their taste buds and pay for it. Whereas a student will prefer a rich portion, a bigger portion of food, but should be cheap. So the food, you know, the customer type of you, you are saying that this one is a higher class, one is a student, which is not earning, but again, he is dependent. On, for money to his parents and he won't be spending much. For children, they should, the menu should be you know, much more uh, uh, attractive, it should have vegetables, it should have protein, carbohydrates, calcium, smoothie shakes, vegetables, burgers, wraps, all these things should be there. The next is equipment availability. So equipment plays a significant role in giving a shape to a raw material. Lack of equipment is not only frustrating for the employee, but it is also a time consuming process. Dishes should be avoided adding in the menu which are more time consuming or make the staff frustrated in the absence of equipment. Now, uh, supposedly, uh, you know, the outlet is selling a ham, uh, sliced ham sandwich, and they don't have a small gravity slicer. How will they really slice the ham? Of 0.0. Thickness of mm uh, 
sliced, they won't be able to unless they don't get it correctly sliced. So it will be frustrating for them. If they slice it with the with the hand, with the knife, it will be time consuming. And in restaurants, time is not a luxury. Time is money for them. The more amount of food they process, the more amount of food they can eat and the more amount of money they need to pay. So equipment availability is again uh, plays a significant role. If you supposedly a restaurant is serving in bulk and they don't have bigger equipments, they don't have rice boilers, they don't have big panties, big pans, big saucepans, how they would be able to make food in big quantity? They won't be able to make it. So what they need is a bigger equipment, bigger ranges. Similarly, in Alakart, if you give bigger pots, they won't be able to work because they don't need that much big pot. They need small frying pans so that they can make two or three portions of food. So equipment should be, you know, as per the menu, it would be easier for the employee to work, it will be less tactic for them, less frustrating. Then is your kitchen space. Kitchen space also have be taken into consideration while planning a menu. Addition of large number of dishes would require more number of raw materials and more space. Storage space, processing space, again cooking space would require much bigger space to work whereas you don't have that much amount of space in your kitchen. Things will get congested and there would be a blockage or there could be a kitchen incident. Accident also can happen. If more items would be there in a kitchen, uh, comparison of space, then there would be a cramp in the kitchen. This always enhances wastage and loss of organization. Product wastage is a monetary loss for an organization. Supposedly, a dish has been prepared, and is, the space is less, there is cramping, and it falls off from the dish. From the hand, the dish is broken, the dish, the plates are broken, the dish is split over the on the floor again restaurant is bearing the cost the plate restaurant is bearing the cost of the dish each and everything that is a money loss that dish is supposed to be sold to the guest for rupees 500 and now that is lying on the floor you can't sell it obviously you can't sell it so that 500 is a loss for the organization so the kitchen space should be as per the menu or your menu should be as per the kitchen space if you have a bigger space you can opt for a bigger menu if you don't have a bigger space, try to go for a smaller menu. Make it a cyclic menu so that you can experiment with all the dishes that you want to serve to the guests. Next is your menu language. It has to be very clear for the guests. Dishes should not be confusing. It should be clearly written what they are ordering. They should know. It is their right to know what they are ordering. All dishes should be described very clearly in the menu. Description of one line or two line in the dish. What is the guest ordering? You should know. And all those things have been added, and this is what they will be getting. It is always required and important to know for a customer to know what he is eating. It is their right, they are paying for it. They must know what they are eating. What has been added in the preparation of the dish should be clearly mentioned in the particular dish helps a lot to the customer. The description will help a lot to the customer. Apart from this menu language, the dish's name should be kept in such a way that it is easily pronounceable for the guests, otherwise they will feel embarrassed. That happens with everyone. It should be, you know, the language should be easily communicable, easily understandable for the guest. Next is balance. So this is again an important part. Any menu had to be well balanced by avoiding colors repetition, words repetition, gravy repetition. Food calorie has to be taken in consideration as is most important. So if we talk about menu balance, the color should not be repeated in the menu. It should be of different colors, attractive colors. Words shouldn't be repeated. Uh, chicken tikka masala, vegetable masala, butter masala, this masala, that masala. Again, the word masala is repeating. The guests would be, you know, will think that okay, they only make a single gravy, and out of that, they make different, different food items. But again, that should not be the case. The word should not be repeated. 
ग्रेवी रेपिटेशन पनीर कुकिंग टमाटो ग्रेवी चिकन कुकिंग टमाटो ग्रेवी मटन कुकिंग टमाटो ग्रेवी वेजिटेबल्स कुकिंग टमाटो ग्रेवी एग कुकिंग टमाटो ग्रेवी अगेन टमाटो ग्रेवी दैट सिंगल ग्रेवी इज रिपीटिंग गेस्ट इज नॉट गेटिंग नो एम्पल अमाउंट ऑफ चॉइसेस ही वोंट बी एबल टू ऑर्डर थिंग्स ही विल ऑर्डर ओनली सिंगल थिंग एंड दे विल दे ऑल विल food calorie should be there so salad section should be there um, vegetable section should be different non veg section should be different so there should be a well balanced menu it would be very easy for everyone to you know uh, check out the menu they'll see the there is a balance menu they'll order more if there would be a proper balance so with this i hope uh, menu planning part is been understood or explained properly to you please stay tuned for much more videos till then this is chef patil the sena signing out please stay safe stay at home maintain social distancing